Hi friends and welcome back to Hebraic Creations. Last time we left off with the charge from Yehovah not to add to or take away from his words. That's where I would like to start today. Back in 1986 is when I began following Yeshua. Besides reading and studying the Bible, I devoured every Bible-related book that came my way. My husband, Russ, was in radio, and authors would send cases of books to the radio stations for promotional purposes. So we had lots of books. <clears throat> Seven years later, I became aware of omissions and additions problems with modern translations. I read this book, The New Age Bible Versions, published in 1993 by G.A. Ripplinger, an Ohio author. And I studied that book thoroughly. To summarize this thick 650 page book, I would say most importantly, that it showed how new Bible translations systematically diminished Yeshua's deity. They laid the groundwork for Christians to embrace watered down truth and eventually paved the way for serious deception in the body and even led people towards a one world religion. <clears throat> you know, I thought this was a little far-fetched 27 years ago, but now there are endless new versions blurring the true specific meaning of Yehovah's word. Ripplinger reported that the New Testament in new translations are based on corrupt Greek manuscripts, lexicons, and dictionaries with authors and editors who have occult beliefs and Luciferian agendas. Wow, Christianity Today and Charisma Magazine should be shouting that from the rooftops, right? <clears throat> Yet, you know, I've heard more disparaging remarks about the King James only crowd in church circles. And I wonder how many believers have studied the evidence before judging them. I spent months doing just that, studying, laying out the King James, NIV, and NASB on the table. Those were the three I had on my bookshelves. <clears throat> and I was making comparisons and evaluating the differences. Now you can do that on biblehub.com, <laughs> a whole lot easier. There certainly seemed to be an agenda at a minimum, the revisions in the new versions of the Bible certainly haven't helped our culture any. They may have added to the moral decline, relativism, and even Marxist leanings of our younger people. There are Barna research studies to underscore the potential influence that these new watered down versions have had. Consider this 2009 report. 60% of professing Christians don't believe Satan is real, only a symbol of evil. And that was 10 years ago. It's probably worse now. No wonder. Look at the changes to Bible passages like Isaiah 14, 12. The NIV states, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn, King James says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Wait a minute. Is Lucifer the morning star? What about Revelation 22, 16, where Yeshua is called the bright morning star? And not just in the King James Version, but in every single new Bible version on BibleHub.com. As though intentionally hoping we think they are one and the same person. Can you see how easily the new translations blur the distinction between Lucifer and Yeshua? 
Fast forward to 2016 and 2017. I received Derek Roberts' books. He's a Netherland author. He wrote Breaking the Chains of Freemasonry and Breaking the Chains of Roman Catholicism. I wanted these books for the prayers and proclamations and renunciations to cut off curses from my bloodline or in my life. But lo and behold, 25 years after my first introduction to this disturbing information, I am again confronted with research on the corrupted New Testament scriptures. Roberts reports the same information as Ripplinger in his Bible versions book. These guys say the same thing, but Roberts doesn't reference Ripplinger. They are from two different parts of the world, Ohio and Netherlands. And there's 25 years between their publication dates. I felt Yehovah wanted to draw my attention back to this issue. I couldn't escape it, so I better not ignore it. So, what's making the New Testament corrupt? Almost every Bible today is based on the Greek manuscripts called Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus. Vaticanus is thought to be the oldest from the 4th century, but there's evidence it may really be a 15th century copy. Despite that, let's be very clear, oldest does not mean most accurate. These two codexes disagree in over 3,000 places. They only represent a mere 1% of available ancient Greek manuscripts. The Vaticanus has enormous omissions, 230 words, 452 clauses, 748 sentences. It's Vatican approved and used for Catholic as well as Protestant Bibles. That's telling. Edit editors Westcott and Hort used the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus to produce the first English Bible in post-Reformation history to depart from the formerly, formerly revered Textus Receptus. They actually hated the Textus Receptus. These guys have really ungodly beliefs and associations that we don't have time to discuss here, but do your research. It is shocking. They used the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus because they were supposedly older manuscripts. I believe it really gave them an excuse to tamper with the word. You will find deceptive language in New Translation footnotes that says, quote, not in the earliest manuscripts, unquote. That's the catchphrase they like to use to dismiss words or sentences they don't like in order to promote their omissions and additions agenda. Again, older does not mean more accurate. Let's consider the Textus Receptus, the respected document that Westcott and Hort usurped. It was compiled using over 5,300 man Greek manuscripts with just minor differences and no contradictions. All that to say, the Greek manuscripts used to compile the New Testament in new versions are sketchy. They fly in the face of Jehovah's command not to add to or take away from his word. I am a King James Version person because I wanted the most accurate word. But even the Greek New Testament in the King James Version is not without its issues. So couldn't we avoid these problems altogether by using a New Testament translation directly from Hebrew? Wouldn't that make sense since Jesus and company were Hebrews? 
Now I recognize we sometimes mistranslate or incorrectly teach the Hebrew in the Old Testament. Remember the misunderstanding of the golden calf story we talked about in the last video? But a Hebrew New Testament, surely that would be a huge improvement, right? I'm so glad you asked. But we'll have to delve into that question in the next video. Stay tuned. <laughs> Shalom.